I am going to turn it over to two of our NCAR science wizards, Jeff and Cecile, and uh, let them take it from here. Hey everybody, my name is Cecile, and I'm so excited to, sh to share with you our movie called It's Just a Reaction. Then in this movie, you will learn how to make elephant toothpaste, and you will also hear the sound of a farting bag, and you witness the eruption of a chemical volcano. My name's Jeff. All of the experiments we're going to do are about chemical reactions. Of the chemical reactions we show you today, you can do the farting bag at home. However, you'd have to be in a real lab environment to do the other experiments. So Cecil and I have our cool chemistry masks with us. So we're going to put them on and transport into the lab. Enjoy the show. Hi, everybody. My name is Cecil, and I work at NCAR in the climate science. And I'm also an NCAR wizard. Hi, everybody. I'm Jeff. I'm a chemist, and I work at NCAR in the chemistry lab. And I'm also an NCAR wizard. As you can see today, we're here in my lab to do some chemical reactions for you. Yes, and these chemical reactions are coming from the NCAR Wizard recipe book. And then you can see that today, because we are working together in a lab, we have to have masks. Yeah, if we didn't have the masks, we'd have to be six feet apart, which would make it kind of difficult. Oh, wow, it's very far away. But fortunately, I took my binocular and I can still see you. Hey, Cecile. Oh, Jeff, you look so big. In this demonstration, we are going to do elephant toothpaste. Then you know our big elephant heart. And then when they brush their teeth, they need a lot of toothpaste. And you don't want, you want to keep their teeth really clean because you don't want them to run around with toothache or cavity. That's right. But do you know where elephants go to the dentist, Cecil? No, no, I didn't. Where? They have to go all the way to Tuscaloosa. <laughs> this is a good one. Yeah. Okay. Okay, then if you look at our book here, this is a reaction where we are mixing hydrogen peroxide with, looking for the recipe here. We are mixing hydrogen peroxide with soap, potassium iodide, and some food coloring to do the toothpaste. And we have already put in the bottom some hydrogen peroxide and some dish soap. The dish soap is just to make some foam and also to keep the teeth of the elephant really clean. <laughs> Then you see also here the reaction is releasing some heat. Mm -hmm. Then we should measure the temperature. Do you have a thermometer somewhere in your lab? Oh, I do, yeah, right good. here actually, yes. So, so the temperature in the tube is now 69 degrees before the reaction. Okay, okay, it, this is perfect. We are going to put some food coloring just for the effect. right here. Blue, so we'll have red and blue stripes, just wow. like real this toothpaste. This is going to look really good. Okay. And now I'm going to put the potassium iodide. Slowly here. Wow! Oh, nice. Oh my gosh, look at this. Measure the temperature. Quick. Oh, 150. 150. 150. Oh, this is degrees. really hot. Oh, that's a good size brush. Yeah. Perfect. It's shining. Then I didn't really understand why we needed to put the potassium iodide. Yeah, so the reaction really just involves hydrogen peroxide decomposing. But we know hydrogen peroxide will be stable, it'll stay in the bottle for a long time. 
So the potassium iodide is a catalyst, so it helps it to decompose, but it oh, doesn't okay. really get used up in the reaction. Yeah. So it just keeps regenerating. Oh, very interesting. Yeah. So, it's a great reaction. Do you think the kids could try this at home now? Yeah, unfortunately not, because the peroxide that I have used is very concentrated and you cannot find this at the store. But indeed, I have another reaction that they can do at home. Great, let's see it. Okay. To show you an experiment that you can easily do at home that you just need baking soda and vinegar here i'm taking apple cider vinegar because it has a color and i like it but you can use any type of vinegar and i'm taking a paper towel and i'm going to put three tablespoons of, of baking soda three tablespoons two a third one and then I'm closing I'm doing a little wrap here with the baking soda inside the paper towel then you see I have a little wrap here now I'm taking a zip lock bag and then I'm going to put half a cup of vinegar soda and I'm putting it in the bag and I'm going to close very carefully the bag but I'm holding the baking soda at the top that it's not falling in the vinegar yet and it's very important that you close very well the bag it should be very well closed then there is nothing that can get in or out okay Okay, then my back is really well closed and now I'm dropping and I'm shaking. And then what you see, you have a lot of bubble coming and the back is becoming bigger. And this is basically CO2 that's escaping. And you see the back, there is a lot of pressure building inside the bag. And you see you have the back explode with the pressure of the co2 inside then it's a fun experiment to do at home then i recommend that you do this in the garden because you can make a mess inside but i hope you enjoy it and thanks for watching This reaction demonstrates a very exothermic decomposition reaction. We call it a volcano reaction. We start with a bright orange powder that looks like lava and we heat it. Once the reaction starts, it creates a second compound that looks like volcano ash. And it's really impressive. And this is the reaction that we're going to do. Oh yeah, I have it in my book that you can see this reaction only involves one chemical. It's not a reaction between two different chemicals like the elephant toothpaste. If we can get a little bit of it hot enough, it will start to decompose and give off heat. And then it's enough to keep the reaction going on its own. The products of the reaction are chromium oxide, nitrogen gas and water. The chromium oxide has a dark green color, so dark it almost looks black unless we can get the camera in close. It's also a lot less dense than the dichromate, so there's a big increase in volume. So the volcano grows and really looks like it's erupting. Also, the nitrogen that's produced is a gas, so it helps with the effect of an eruption. But I have a question. I see here that the reaction produces H2O, it's water. What happened to the water? It doesn't seem wet at all. 
Well, it's pretty hot in there, so the water comes off as water vapour or steam, and that adds to the effect of the eruption. One really impressive thing about this reaction is the colour scheme. We start with an orange powder and end up with very dark green flakes. Chromium is particularly versatile, and its compounds can show up in many of the rainbow colours. For example, red, orange, yellow, green, violet. And I have a fun fact for you. The name chromium is coming from ancient Greek. The word chroma means color in Greek. Isn't it interesting? Thanks for watching and we hope to see you in person next year. Let's turn the light. One, two, three. was such a cool string of reactions and so much cool stuff all in one from elephants to farts to Greek and volcanoes. There was so much fun stuff in there. <laughs> Thanks for sharing all of that, Jeff and Cecile. I think we have a couple questions if you're ready. And if anybody else wants to go ahead and share any other questions. Um, the first question is, why was the elephant toothpaste so hot? Yeah, yeah then, so oh, go ahead, Jeff. <laughs> Sorry, so yeah. So that's what we call also an exothermic reaction. So when the uh, hydrogen peroxide decomposes, it gives off heat because the products you make, water and oxygen, are more stable than the hydrogen peroxide that you started with. So the difference comes out as heat goes into the heating the bubbles yeah okay and you probably saw some steam as well coming out of the top yeah absolutely and dan had said um just that this is really cool and also made a joke about um elephants getting cavities do elephants get cavities but i have to think well no that because of elephant toothpaste right <laughs> yeah and i i yeah i would say that I don't know, I'm not a dentist for elephant, but <laughs> I think that we get cavities because of sugar. And I don't think elephant eats sugar. Then I think probably elephant don't get cavities. That I, is true. It's my guess. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> so here's a question from someone whose name is entered in as Cumulus, which just obviously cumulus needs some of my cumulus cloud earrings that i'm sporting today and cumulus wonders can we do the volcano experiment at home one to answer this jeff yeah sure yeah not the last one that we did the dichromate volcano i mean the, the that's pretty toxic stuff we were doing it actually inside a fume hood and we we're wearing face shields and glasses and goggles and so you really have to get that stuff from a chemical supplier and be a trained professional to do the reaction <laughs> as we are obviously so. <laughs> you just have to become an NCAR scientist and get your own lab that's all you have to do and then you can do a volcano like that <laughs> um here's a good question Jeremy's wondering would I be able to extinguish the volcano with water and also why does it become green instead of a different color yeah, I don't think I think you need a lot of water to put it out. It's pretty hot in there. I don't actually know the temperature. We couldn't get a thermometer in there to check it, but uh, that is pretty hot, I would think. And the green is just uh, the nature of the compound you get, the chromium and the oxidation state, if you know a little bit about chemistry. So it goes from being like a more oxidized, which is orange, to a little less oxidized which is the green color. And that's the, the color of the compound we make. The trioxide just happens to be green. And that's you know, just to do with the energy of the compound, really, the energy levels inside it. Great, thank you. Dan is asking what we're probably all wondering. <laughs> Does the fart bag smell bad? <laughs> yeah, and it doesn't really smell bad. It's a reaction between vinegar and baking soda and 
basically when the back part, you smell a little bit of vinegar, then it doesn't smell really bad. And I want to add something about this experiment because you should try this at home. You should ask your parents first, but you should really try this at home. But you should know that it doesn't work every time as well. Then to do the recording here, I did probably three movie and I took the one that that worked the best. Sometimes the back will become really big and it will take a long time to fart. It will take a long time. And also if you don't close the back very carefully or if you have a little hole, then it will not explode because what will happen, you will have the gas that will be allowed to get out of the back and you will not have enough pressure building inside the bag. Okay, tips. Tips for home fart bag making, very important. <laughs> oh, this is an interesting question. So Leif and John are wondering, they say this is very cool, and they're wondering, what's your favorite chemical reaction? Oh, well, I get to deal with a lot of chemical reactions in my everyday work, and I'm in the lab, so I do see a lot, but you know, that elephant toothpaste reaction is pretty cool because it illustrates a lot of things. You know, it gives off heat, it changes color a little bit, and uh, we get lots of gas given off and pretty dramatic. So I think I still like that one, like of all the ones I get to do. Yeah, I, I, I would say also it's my favorite one. Well, and one more thing, we have um, Vivian, who is age seven and joining us today, is wondering a little bit more about why does the elephant toothpaste explode out of the tube like that? Then what's happening when you have this reaction? You have put some um, dish soap at the bottom of um, the tube, and then you are going to release gas, then you have liquid that become gas, and gas take much more room than, than liquid when it's, then it's why it's exploding like this. Okay. Do you want to add something, Jeff? Or? Yeah, and there's also some heat as well, so you know, the gas expands, but yeah, basically gases are about what? a thousand times less dense than liquid and so when you start with a little bit of liquid like that you get a thousand times bigger volume with the gas when it expands and add the heat into that then it gets pretty dramatic yeah. great thank you and we have a question from juniper about the orange powder that you used for the volcano is it used for anything else don't know about that one specifically I mean, as Cecil says, um, the word chromium comes from color. So a lot of chromium compounds are used in paints, for example. So I wouldn't be surprised if it weren't used. How many negatives is that? But I think it is probably <laughs> used yes. in different chromium compounds, yeah. Great. And Danny's wondering, can you do a really big volcano with those same, I, I, guessing with those same ingredients. I would think so, yeah. If we have enough stuff, then yeah. <laughs> I don't see why not, yeah. Probably That's not as big as the Himalaya or something like this, but you can, <laughs> if you have enough material, you can do a big one. But you have to be careful that you need to put it in, it, it really is a toxic product and you want to make it outside or in a place where you can get all the toxic product out of, of uh, the volcano. Sure, because the bigger it is, then the more toxic product it's going to produce, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So we have a few more good questions. Checho, Kai, and Amaya are wondering if you could explain a little bit more about what actually made the farting bag fart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that we saw in the our chemistry book that uh, the reaction when you mix vinegar and baking soda is uh, releasing CO2. 
and CO2 is a gas, and then you will have the bag that's becoming bigger and bigger because it's very tightly closed and the back is becoming bigger and bigger and at some point the back explodes and it's basically the co2 coming out of the reaction that make the the back fault great so try that at home checho and kai and amaya see if it works for you so here's a good question these are cool experiments and Alice is wondering, how are these used or how are they relevant in the real world, these kinds of reactions? Huh. Yeah. Question. Yeah, I don't know if you'd necessarily see some of these. And uh, oddly enough, I think maybe the farting bag is the most relevant <laughs> because it <laughs> involves acidifying um carbonate which is what's you know going on in the oceans a little bit and co2 uptake and kind of the reverse of this uh, but uh yeah i mean that whole system of carbonate and uh, co2 and bicarbonate is very relevant in the upper levels of the ocean and uh, trying to take up um, acidifying uh, the shells of mollusks and things like that and decomposing when they get very thin when it's too acidic so i guess that one is actually somewhat relevant believe it or not <laughs> <laughs> so we're getting a glimpse into the um what the scientists do on their off days when they're not doing directly real experiments all the time they get to have a little bit of fun with some fun experiments too right <laughs> yeah Yes. Mm -hmm. So, oh, Danny's wondering about your actual lab. How many people work in your lab? Is it just the two of you? And are you, yeah, I guess Danny is asking about the chemistry lab. Oh, I, the I bet. Building. And indeed, I doesn't work. I don't work in the lab. I can to do the experiment with Jeff. And Jeff can answer the question. Is, is it just you in general? Oh, there are a couple of us. My colleague John and I work in the lab together. And so it's basically two of us in the lab. Plus, we often get student visitors coming to help us. And uh, some of them have, you know, come over from CU or from other universities, sometimes for a couple of weeks or sometimes for a year or something like that to work on uh, projects. And um, so, yeah, we'd. We're always happy you can get people to come and work with us, but uh, it's usually the two of us and uh, <clears throat> there are about 80 people in the chemistry division altogether, chemistry lab per se. And so uh, there are, the are chem they all the chemists? Room. Not all, no. Um, some of them are physicists, some of them are chemists and some mathematicians because we also do like uh, computer modeling of the atmosphere, of the chemicals in the atmosphere, not just the weather. And so we do have mathematicians also working uh, in our section as well, yeah. Great, and we are, we're just about to wrap up, but there's one more um, good question from Leif and John. You were, you've been talking a little bit about gas versus liquid and actually some of the past presentations did as well. And they're wondering, is there more gas or more liquid water on earth? It means water vapor or liquid water? I guess that's, so. Yeah. That's what I'm yeah, guessing, probably. the gas yeah, phase yeah. of water, water vapor. Yeah, I think there is more liquid water than water vapor. Yeah. We have all the ocean. And then it's really Include the ocean, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it's just about time to wrap up. We have yet another fun experiment uh, demonstration coming up. So I just wanna say thank you so much to our science wizards, Jeff and Cecile for joining us today from your homes and from your lab in the video. And, uh, and thanks to everybody who has joined us for this presentation. And we will be back in just a couple of minutes for the next one, which I believe is what's up with weather. We're talking about a lot of weather this afternoon. So thanks, Jeff and Cecile, and thanks everybody for joining us. Thanks, Tiffany. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>